thank you for introducing me and thank you for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, actually, I do not want to talk too much uh, about the difference, difference between pain as a symptom and pain as a disorder. Uh, I will talk about pain as a diagnosis, which makes a difference. And in fact, ICD-10 shows uh, several, I would even say hundreds of examples, where they use diagnosis for symptoms, but not for complex disorders uh, as such. So. Uh, I think for, for the, the issue of classification, it's not that important, and we should not lose too much time with the discussion whether it's, uh, it's a symptom or uh, a disorder. Moreover, uh, the, the people who invited me to present uh, suggested the title ISP and the classification of pain in ICD-11. I also cannot represent all positions and opinions of people who are uh, in the I ISP uh, uh, group. And, uh, I just want to highlight a few of perhaps common positions. And then I also want to go into some details, but these are specific positions just to exemplify uh, how we could proceed and uh, just to, to stimulate the discussion. But before going into detail, uh, I want to disclose some potential conflict of interest. Uh, I'm presenting from time to time talks on, on adherence, uh, medication adherence, and if companies find it valuable, they give me money for that. Uh, fortunately, some of them do. Uh, but I do not think that this is a serious conflict of interest that uh, uh, influenced the, the content of my talk today. So, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Any idea how to proceed? Okay, thank you. We talked already about the socioeconomic relevance of pain syndromes, uh, and uh, Nigel uh, summarized uh, several figures on, on, on uh, financial aspects. Uh, we know that in the so-called Western cultures, back pain is one of the most expensive conditions, uh, and we can say that in some uh, conditions, pain is a disorder of its own, and it's one of the major reasons for workers' compensation, early retirement, and other very costly aspects of our healthcare systems. Moreover, if pain is a comorbid condition or a comorbid symptom of other medical conditions such as cancer or diabetes, it's, it changes the issue of, of these disorders uh, substantially. A, I already mentioned that it makes a big difference whether someone suffered from cancer uh, or other medical conditions, survived it, but developed pain as a consequence, or another person who did not develop pain. The first one is at higher risk to have a very low quality of life, to show increased health care use, and uh, not to re uh, re accept the social positions and, and, uh, and roles that he or she had. So pain is frequently the major condition that decides about uh, uh, disability and other very important issues. And we face several serious problems in the adequate management uh, of pain. And one is that many pain conditions are underdiagnosed, and this is true for all over the world. Uh, they are not recognized. Many doctors focus on uh, supposed under, uh, underlying medical conditions, but they oversee the, the serious consequences of pain that is also uh, existing. Uh, many primary care doctors complain that pain diagnoses are not feasible for, or several of them are not feasible for their medical care. Uh, and uh, the same holds true for non-pain specialists who find it hard to deal with pain diagnosis in ICD-11. Pain management is not satisfactory in most countries, uh, and uh, one issue that contributes to this fact is that the financial coverage of pain management uh, is, uh, is unsatisfactory. Uh, and I'll come back to all of these points uh, just in a minute. My final point I want to make is that we need more effort for pain research, uh, and for all of these five points, uh, we can't say 
that pain classification is the major basis to improve these points. Uh, just to make a few examples, uh, the problem of underdiagnosing pain is a problem of not feasible uh, diagnosis in uh, classification systems such as ICD-11. If the GP finds the diagnosis easily, if he can deal with them, then he will use them. And then he will also uh, continue to, to offer adequate pain treatment to the patient. Many uh, healthcare systems depend on diagnosis. Uh, in Germany, the inpatient treatments are uh, depending on diagnosis-related groups. If we do not have a diagnosis for chronic pain that indicates that this patient needs a multidisciplinary treatment approach, then the healthcare insurance will not cover any interdisciplinary treatments. That means they would only cover a, a standard medication uh, without any additional uh, interventions. Although we know from research that some patients with chronic pain conditions need this uh, perhaps more expensive but successful treatments. The same holds true for research. Uh, in, if you want to convince a, a, a health minister to spend some money in a research program, he always wants to know which is the diagnosis you want to treat, which is the diagnosis you want to investigate. If you do not have a, a catchy diagnosis, uh, you'll have it harder to get some money for research. Uh, and all of these problems uh, are problems of, of pain and pain patients and pain researchers. So we have to talk about how to improve the situation. Uh, and I'm happy that Dr. Jacob offered the, the structure of ICD-11, the ICD-11 developmental process, because it shows how hard it is to get into it and uh, to, to uh, improve diagnosis for pain patients and pain conditions. So what should we think about if we talk about pain? We should think about three options, and some of them were already mentioned. Most people think that pain is just a warning symptom. Even in these cases, some people need specific pain treatments. Uh, perhaps just to reduce additional stress, we should not only focus on treating the underlying medical condition, but sometimes we also need to consider treating the uh, pain that is associated with it either to reduce stress, to prevent uh, chronification persistence, uh, just, such as preventing learning and memory mechanisms, uh, etc. So in some of these conditions where pain is just a warning symptom, we also need a specific pain treatment additionally to the other medical condition that is existent. Pain can also be a disease of its own without other medical conditions being uh, obvious or it can be a unique disease as a comorbidity pattern of other medical conditions. Uh, in these cases, pain has lost its warning function uh, and stands for its own. And in these cases, pain always needs a special treatment. Uh, and finally, pain can be both a warning signal and a disease of its own. In case two and three, we always need specific pain treatments. Uh, and if we keep in mind that classification systems also must reflect treatment needs and are uh, the window to, to offer adequate treatment, that means we have to think about how to, to install, how to implement pain diagnosis into the current classification system. That means, after all, ICD-11. What are the shortcomings of the current pain classification in ICD-10? Just to make a few examples, pain diagnoses are dispersed over various categories and they are treated quite differently. That means for a person who is not specialized in pain and who does not treat only one pain condition such as headache, uh, this person has to know all about the whole catalog of, of uh, ICD-10, which includes some thousand diagnoses, to find the adequate one. The rational why sometimes pain diagnoses are summarized under organ specificity, such as mental health or mental disorders or neurology. Sometimes they are just a rest category, and sometimes they are grouped under a category of general symptoms without further consequences. This rationale is uh, completely unclear. There is no clear rationale behind it. 
uh, and that means for all other people who are not experts in, in the pain field, it's pretty hard to, to deal with pain diagnosis in ICD-11. Some of these pain diagnoses are not relevant for the healthcare compensation, and it, this means if they are not relevant for healthcare compensation in these countries, pain patients do not get the adequate treatment because they do not have an adequate diagnosis as door opener for healthcare compensation. And this is especially true for the category of general symptoms and signs, uh, which uh, mentions several pain diagnoses with high prevalence, serious treatment needs, but without any relevance for healthcare care uh, uh, compensation. That means, uh, uh, to make the next point is, uh, for several serious pain conditions, we have improved classification approaches. Uh, you all know that fibromyalgia uh, has received new classification criteria just a few months ago. Uh, there are some proposals for IBS, for irritable bowel syndrome, the own three criteria. There are good proposals for uh, the diagnosis of headache. All these good developments of pain experts should be considered when defining uh, a proposal of a revised uh, version of, of pain diagnosis in ICD-11. That means we have to find a way how to bring these good proposals, these uh, evaluated proposals, into the classification system. And although Dr. Jacob mentioned that some people are pain experts who are in the topic advisory groups, I would say that these are not enough people and therefore the track of bringing these good diagnostic proposals into the ICD-11 process is pretty hard to go. And last but not least, some pain diagnosis emphasized a mind-body dualism that is not acceptable to most of us and that just overemphasize either psychological or biological uh, models, mechanisms for, for pain uh, development and pain uh, uh, continuation. And one of these examples is somatoform pain disorder, persistent somatoform pain disorder. Dr. Jacob mentioned it. I think he thought this is a good example. I think it is a bad example uh, for, for a classification of pain conditions. And just to uh, highlight why I am pretty critical with this diagnosis uh, is that it overemphasizes the psych psychogenesis of, of pain symptoms. You can read here. Uh, psychological factors are the main causative influence, uh, which is a clear contradiction to a biopsychosocial uh, model of pain. And moreover, uh, they specify emotional conflicts and psychosocial problems as psychological causes. These are two constructs that are very unspecific. Uh, nearly all of us have some kind of psychosocial problems. And if you have additional pain, a doctor might decide whether he links both of them or not. So uh, this is not specific. This is not helpful for classification. So persistent somatoform Somatoform pain disorder is an example of overemphasizing psychological aspects. And uh, I think this is the model that all of you know, the interaction of uh, psychological factors, brain factors, nervous factors, but also humoral factors and tissue uh, damage, etc. So we need pain models that contribute to that and that, that uh, adequately reflect these interactions and they do not overemphasize just one of them. Actually, the American system for classifying mental disorders just uh, published the first draft of, of the DSM-5 DSM approach. Uh, currently, DSM-4 is available and valid, but DSM-5 should be, is, is supposed to be introduced in 2013. Uh, and they want to abolish the, the distinction between medically explained somatic symptoms, let's say medically explained pain symptoms, and medically unexplained uh, pain symptoms and other somatic symptoms, which is a kind of revolutionary. I'm not sure whether this is going too far, uh, but uh, they want to, to um, overcome the problems with the decision whether 
pain and other somatic symptoms are explained by other medical conditions or not, because there are good data available showing that this is major, this is primarily a doctor variable. The one doctor decides all symptoms are medically explained, the other doctor decides none of the symptoms is medically explained, all symptoms have some psychological origin. So we do not learn anything about the patient, we just learn something about the doctor with this with this distinction. And therefore, they abolished it, uh, which is something we could discuss about. Uh, and they introduced some psychological f features that might be easier to, to classify, f even for those people who are not specialized in psychology. But what happened to, to the pain diagnosis? You all know that pain is the, major, the most frequent diagnosis and the most frequent condition in medical systems. And in this proposal, the proposal is was, it was downgraded to, to a, a specifier of this diagnosis. That means uh, all patients with chronic pain conditions uh, would receive a diagnosis like somatic symptom disorder, comma, subspecifier, predominant pain. Uh, I think this is also not acceptable for, for most pain conditions and for most pain researchers. But this is perhaps also an example of what happens if uh, uh, work groups of classification uh, systems uh, do not represent the, the, the expertise of, of pain researchers. Just to make another example, cancer pain is not included in, in the classification system, although we know that it is a serious condition, uh, it has a strong tendency to persist and it decides whether people who received successful cancer treatment can be uh, feel disabled uh, or uh, have early retirements, etc., or whether people after cancer uh, treatments can go back to work, etc. So the additional condition of pain in cancer patients uh, is a very important uh, information and uh, therefore pain as a comorbid condition of, of cancer and uh, has to be treated adequately. That means we also need some diagnostic information that should be included, that should get a code uh, in ICD-11 uh, to show that this cancer patient has to get some additional pain treatment. So this is just another example uh, what should be changed in, in a new uh, version in, 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 in the revision of ICD-11. Another point is how to consider, consider these difficult psychological features. Uh, I think we have to define psychological features that are easy to classify also for non-psychological experts. And one of them could be uh, fear avoidance. Uh, I think this is a nice meta-analysis published just two years ago showing that uh, low fear avoidance, the tendency of the patient to avoid any movements that might uh, trigger pain experiences, uh, if this tendency is very strong, is above average, uh, then we would say this is a patient with substantial fear avoidance. And this feature is the major predictor of uh, whether symptoms will persist or whether uh, the low back pain will vanish. So there are some more specific and concrete psychological features available that could be included into the ICD-11 uh, classification criteria of pain. So how to proceed? And uh, Dr. Jacob has shown the structure of ICD-11. I think it's pretty complicated and, uh, to think about uh, where could we influence this process. And I think there are two major roads uh, we have to decide which one to go. And one is more to think about local improvements uh, of criteria for pain diagnosis. And this is something what we have done in Germany, and uh, I had the honor to, to chair a, a consensus group, uh, which ended up with the proposal of chronic pain with psychological and somatic factors. And fortunately, we are able to introduce it in the German modification of ICD-10. That means we can't try to improve some specific diagnoses that are of relevance for pain uh, conditions, uh, but not to change the general structure of ICD-11, uh, which would mean that we had to try to influence many topical advisory groups uh, to, to bring our criteria for headache into the uh, ICD-11 process of low back pain, of non-cardiac chest pain, etc. 
Another perhaps more revolutionary approach would be to try to introduce a new chapter just on pain and associated conditions. I just want to highlight how this could work and what could be included in such a chapter. Uh, we could define some general chronic pain conditions, uh, which would be characterized by multiple pain symptoms, not only limited to one joint or to the to headache, etc. Uh, and we can discuss whether it makes still sense to define a primarily psychological chronic pain condition or whether we should just skip it as this category and say that all pain conditions have somatic and psychological factors. Uh, after all, chronic pain conditions, because they always are superimposed by, by learning processes. And we can define a diagnosis for chronic pain in the context of other medical conditions which require specific medical attention. So this would be some examples of more general chronic pain conditions. And you all know the specific pain conditions from starting from fibromyalgia over headache to chronic pelvic pain and other specific pain conditions. I think these two groups would not justify to introduce a new chapter, so we have to look for, uh, for uh, allied conditions and uh, certainly we could think about functional somatic syndromes because they also have a, a bad home in, in the mental health division uh, of, of the classification system and many uh, opinion leaders of this field would prefer to move these to a kind of uh, interface disorder between mental conditions and, and, and um, uh, biomedical conditions. So we could think about combining these functional somatic conditions with our pain conditions to a new chapter and try to get it introduced into ICD-11. Maybe I, it is too late for that, but uh, I still want to, to trigger this idea and uh, to think about it. Perhaps ICD-12, ICD-13 might be an opinion to go this way uh, if, it, if we find out that it's too late for this way now. But to, to, uh, uh, to, to pronounce the, the, the benefits of such an approach, uh, I think it's very convincing for a people like primary care doctors, they would have their category for pain conditions and they have to check this category if a patient is complaining about pain and if this pain is persistent. So it would be more feasible for the need of the general healthcare system uh, and uh, it might be also stimulating for further research. So let me summarize. Uh, I hope that I was able to show you that adequate classification in classification systems such as ICD-11 is the basis for adequate treatment. Therefore, we have to think about uh, this issue very seriously. Uh, this is the, the, the pathway to open the doors in the healthcare systems, uh, in the uh, healthcare compensation. Uh, and if we want to tackle the economic consequences of pain, we need adequate classification system for pain. I think that the ICD-11 process suffers from a serious uh, underrepresentation of pain experts, people from ISP uh, or people from EFIC, who are really experts for pain. They are structured, as Dr. Jacob has shown, following medical specialities. We have the cancer uh, chapters in, in ICD-11. Uh, we have mental health chapters, etc. That means pain is always second priority. First priority, priority is schizophrenia in, in, in mental health or uh, blood pressure in, in internal medicine, etc. And pain is always second or third prior, priority. And therefore, I think that there are not enough pain experts in the process of uh, the revision of ICD-11. And the other way that was mentioned by Dr. Jacob is the internet, but this means there are every day thousands of people who submit their comments. I'm not sure if anyone is really reading all these comments that are submitted via internet, so we have to think about other ways how, how to get influence on this process. So uh, I think the other points I uh, already made. So thank you for your attention. And uh, we published some of these ideas in this paper. If you are interested, in it, I would be happy about that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think clear and, and honest words. <laughs> I think you share the opinion of the, of the auditorium. Any questions to Winfried? 
comment. Thank you. I would like to make a comment on that because, um, first of all, I, I would like to mention that you are the chair of our task force, of the EFIC task force for the ICD-11. So we will be, in June, we will be at WHO and also have a face-to-face -face meeting with Dr. Jacob. The second point is that yesterday we have discussed in our council meeting of EFI councillors which of these options you have mentioned for an implementation of chronic pain into the ICD-11 would be our favorite and there was a unanimous decision that the most strict one the own general chapter on chronic pain would be our favorite. It's also my personal favorite for many of the reasons that you have mentioned. Practicability, feasibility, logical aspects. So I'm also skeptical if we will succeed with this just as the first trial. But nevertheless, I, I think it is worth a try even if we succeed then in the next version, in the next revision of the ICD-11. Um, what is your opinion? Do you think it is possible as an intermediate step to find a compromise such as it was uh, proposed, for example, by the president of ISA, Akalsa, today, do you think that will be possible, that will be more um, feasible than our approach? Yeah, I think it would fit better in, into the structure of ICD-11, which makes it perhaps more feasible for, for WHO to accept it. It is perhaps more work for us because we have to go through all the diagnoses that are of relevance for, for pain uh, and we have to check whether it makes sense to add some, some specifier. I think this is a yes, uh, favorite uh, idea to add kind of specifiers for, di for other medical di uh, diagnosis. Uh, it would mean that we have to go through the whole system. We have to talk to m several, if not all, uh, topical advisory groups and try to get some influence there because currently I, I do not see any improvements in, in, in pain diagnosis in ICD-11. I checked, I checked uh, the diagnosis for persistent somatoform pain disorder. I checked other pain diagnoses that are in ICD-10. They were not changed for ICD-11 so far. Uh, and this process is uh, very slow, very complicated. Most or at least several topic advisor groups have not have, have not acknowledged uh, the alpha version. Dr. Jacob is talking about the beta version, uh, but most have not acknowledged uh, and approved the alpha version. So uh, it's a complicated system, and trying to influence this kind of chaotic system is, is not easy. I, I, but I, there would be ways, and I think these kind of specifiers would be one way. Plus, I think we need an improved uh, pain diagnosis uh, under the mental uh, health issue. Uh, this is also still in the system, uh, but I think there are good reasons and we might find ways to, to achieve this goal. I also think it is much too time consuming and maybe already too late to talk with all these special expert groups individually, separately, mm. to influence each group to be less conservative and to allow us to jump into their chapter. Yeah. So I also think the more revolutionary solution maybe could be the easier one at the end, and I hope so. <laughs> okay. okay, just one very quick question, please. It's not really a question. It's more an observation to follow up on, on what was just said, um, that by acknowledging a lesser result, which would be to add the specifier throughout every group is acknowledging a compromise and I think that this group would support anything that can be done not to accept the compromise but to go directly for acknowledgement of chronic pain as its own separate identity. Thank you. Thank you also for this comment.